We can automate the gathering and consolidating of files from a folder easily with Power Query, but most people do it wrong. In this video, I'll show you how to get files from a folder so any new files are automatically included on refresh, and I'll show you the errors most people make and what to do instead. By the way, this applies to both Excel and Power BI. In the folder here, you can see I have seven CSV files. By the way, you can also get text files and Excel files from a folder, which we'll look at later. Now, I recommend that the folder only contains the files that you want to consolidate. That said, you can pick and choose the files you want to import. It's just safer and cleaner to keep the folder dedicated to your source data files. Trust me. So in this example, each file contains three columns of data, date, region, and revenue. Ideally, they should have the same number of columns with the same column names, although they don't need to be in the same order. Now, typically data exported from another system is in a consistent layout, so you shouldn't have any problems. Let's close this down and we'll go and get the data from the files with Power Query. You'll find it on the data tab of the ribbon, get data from file, from folder. And if you're using Power BI, you'll find it on the home tab of the ribbon, get data, more, and then folder. From there, it's the same. So let's go back to Excel. Here I can browse to the folder containing my files. I've already got it selected, so I'll click open. At this dialog box, you see a list of the files in the folder. Here you can choose to load them right away or combine and transform, combine and load, and combine and load too. I always choose transform data. This is going to allow me to filter out any files I don't need, keeping my file as small as possible. So here we have a list of the files and the metadata. I can filter out any files I don't need at this point. Now keep in mind, if you save the file containing the query in the same folder as the data, it's going to get double counted, which is why it's a good idea to only store the data files in this folder and save the file containing the query outside of it. Now I need all of these files, so I'm ready to combine them. And we do that by clicking the double down arrow on the content column. This launches the Combine Files dialog box where you can see a preview of the data. Now by default, it chooses the first file as the sample file, but you can choose a different one from the list. It's detected the file origin, but you can also change it here and the delimiter. It's going to use the first 200 rows to detect the data types. You can choose the entire data set, but that's going to make things quite slow potentially, or you can set it to not detect data types. I'll leave it based on the first 200 rows. Once you're happy with these settings, click OK. Power Query goes and gets the data from the files you selected and it consolidates it into one table. Now on the left is a list of the queries that were automatically generated by Power Query. And there are two items in this list that are important and you can forget about the other ones. The first one is transform sample file. This is the query that Power Query uses as a template for consolidating all of the files into the final query. It only contains one file of data, the file you selected at the previous dialog box. And then the final query that consolidates all the files into one table. If you want to make some transformations to the data before loading it, you can make those changes in the sample file or the final query, except, and this is where people go wrong, if the transformations need to be done before all the files are combined. Now, in the case of this data, it's already clean and ready to append, so any transformations can be done in either query. Let's take a look at some data that's not so clean. Here I have some sales data files, and if I open one of them, you can see that the column headings are split over two rows, which is a no-no because tabular data structures, which we should all strive to use and Power Query returns for us, only have a single row of column labels. Now we can fix this data layout in Power Query before combining the files. Let's take a look. So again, on the data tab, get data from file from folder. And my files are in this folder called data. So I'll click open. And here I'm going to go straight ahead and combine and transform because I want all of the files. And that's just going to save us a bit of time. Now, because I'm combining Excel files, I get a slightly different dialog box here because Excel can have multiple sheets, whereas CSV files and text files only ever have one sheet. I've got one sheet in this file. If I had multiple sheets, they'd be listed here, as would any tables that I have on those sheets. So I've got a sheet called sales. 
Now the sheets in all of the files you're getting also need to be called sales. Likewise, if you were getting data from tables, the table names in each file need to be the same. So I've got a sheet called sales and there's my data. Let's click OK. And you can see the first row has been appointed as the header row, but then our second row of headers is in the first row of the data. And if I scroll down to row 2155, you can see the headers appear again at the start of the second file. And they'll repeat like that throughout the data set for each file in the folder. And it's at this point that most people go wrong because they try to fix the layout in the final query when they should be fixing the data layout before combining the files. And that's done in the sample query. This would also be the case if you needed to unpivot data, for example. So let's go and do that. In the sample file query, I'm going to remove the step that promotes the headers. Now both of my header rows are in the rows of the data. I can transpose it. Now I've got my headers in two columns. Let's right click and merge those columns into one. And we'll separate them with a space. The name of the column doesn't matter. I'll click OK. There's my new column headers. Let's transpose the data back. Now I can promote them. Use first row as headers. There's my new header row. And we've recorded all the steps on the right hand side. So all of these steps are going to be applied to each file in the folder before they're combined. Now if we go back to our final query, we get an error. And that's because this last step here, change type, is looking for the old column names, which we fixed. So all we need to do is delete that. That's fixed it. Now we can select all the columns again, holding down shift, select the last one. And then on the transform tab, detect data type. And we're back. Now if I scroll down to row 2155, you can see the extra header row is gone. And that'll be the case throughout the data set. Now let's do a little bit more tidying up. I don't need this source name column. It's just the name of the file. So I'll press delete. Let's give the query a better name. This is order data. So I'm going to call it orders. It's important that the name you give the query is useful because that name is going to flow through to Power Pivot. If you load it into the data model, it's going to become the table name and the sheet name. Now I get asked about this a lot. So to reiterate, if you need to make transformations before the files are combined, you should make them in the sample file query. If the transformations can be made after the files are combined, then you can use either the sample query or the final query. All right, I'm ready to close and load. Now in Excel, it's a little different to Power BI. Let's take a look. In Power BI, I can only load the data to the data model. So on the home tab of the ribbon, I have close and apply. And that's all I can do. In Excel, I have some more options. On the home tab, I can close and load. And under close and load two, I can choose from a few different destinations. I can load it to a table in the workbook, a pivot table report, or a pivot chart. Or if I'm loading it to the data model or I'm using this query as an intermediate step, I might only want to create a connection. I can also put it on an existing worksheet or a new worksheet. Let's load it into a table on a new worksheet. And there's my data. Notice the sheet name is orders and the table name is table underscore orders. And that's my query name flowing through to my data set. Now, one of the most awesome things about Power Query is the ability to get updates with the click of a single button. Let's say we just received the next period's sales data. Let me paste it in. So now we've got 2020's data. Let's go back to the query and I'll just check. We've only got 2019, 2018 and 2017 data. In order to get the new data, there's a few ways I can refresh this query. I can right click it and refresh. On the data tab of the ribbon, I can refresh or refresh all queries. Or if I've only got a connection to this query, I can open the queries and connection pane via the data tab. And on the right hand side, I can click the little refresh icon here. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see it's already refreshed. And if I look at my drop down now, I've got 2020 data. In Power BI, you'll find the refresh button on the home tab of the ribbon and refresh. Alternatively, in the data view, you can select the table 
and via the ellipsis you've got refresh data. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you like this video please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.